able to pick up one dragon. They got destroyed by Team Dignitas and Gravity, yeah. two games that you would expect to be wins on Cloud 9 schedule to start the year. And the win they did get had to squeak by Team Solo Mid in that game. Yeah, they gave up the first five dragons and still were able to win the game, which right. is a credit to their ability to play from behind and actually have shot calling without That's having true. high, but then it just hasn't carried through to any of the other games. Uh, Band-wise as well, TIP found wins with Fizz mid lane and Yasuo top lane, but those have been banned against them in both of their losses. It seems like Impulse actually does want to play Yasuo, yeah. but they haven't had the opportunity for it since that game one. Something that'll allow them to engage, get in the midst of a fight immediately, whether it's a skirmish or a full 5v5, they want it. Yeah, they want to be able to fly around, make plays. And once again, Fizz oh. and Yasuo, as well as Alistair, so three champions that were victorious for Team Impulse in game one. Uh, fairly consistent bans against this team now. Seeing what everybody else is doing, and it's been working. Cloud9 is going to use that as their first stitch against TIP here to try and get under their skin. One last ban for Impulse, and that will be the Rek'Sai from Medios' side. That should yeah. easily equal the Gragas, but it also looks like it has swung a rumble into a first pick along with Lee Sin. It pretty much Impulse. dares Cloud9 to pick Gragas by banning mm -hmm. away the Rek'Sai. Also, uh, if Rush does want to play Lee Sin, he definitely does not want to play against Rek'Sai. Uh, so much of his early pressure can be negated by the Rek'Sai. Also, the fact that if he ever Sonic Waves Rek'Sai, if he's just burrowed, you actually don't connect the second part of your Q on Lee Sin, the Resonating Strike, thanks to Rek'Sai just popping back up out of the ground. Yeah. Uh, but because Cloud9's already picked a jungler, Rush doesn't have to pick his jungler yet, and they can go with two power picks for themselves right off the bat. They do get that Sivir fourth time in a row for Apollo to pick it up for the team. He's scored just about the same each time, so it's not really the bottom lane that needs a lot of focus in this game. It's going to be what's already been banned out. Shao Wei, Shao, and Impact. Apollo, a very consistent yeah. AD carry. Yeah. He doesn't necessarily make big flashy plays, but he's always there for the team. Sivir fits that pick perfectly. Mm -hmm. It almost feels like if Impulse has the opportunity to pick Sivir, they will do it <laughs> every single oh, yeah. time. And what actually creates a win or loss for Team Impulse is the performance of Rush in those solo lanes, not necessarily right. on Apollo or Adrian. Well, they got their win when he was on Eve, striking fear into everybody on the other side of the map. We haven't seen too much more play of that since the first week of the LCS. Ooh. A few bans to some teams, but not being on the Rift. Maokai and Nautilus going for a pretty tanky lineup here on the side of Cloud9 as it's already right back to Impulse. They didn't waste any time in those picks. Yeah, we got ourselves a tank team. Yeah. For Cloud9, always priority for them. On the Maokai, being up against Rumble will give Impact a pretty good laning phase if he wants it and if we don't end up seeing lane swaps. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's, there's not too much to read into cloud Nine strategy here, other than Lemonation preferred Nautilus over Thresh which isn't really a surprise, even though Thresh has seen more priority in the North American LCS. Yeah. If we go back to the playoffs, uh, Lemonation, the early adopter of Nautilus, very strong on that champion for both the early jungle invades, right. as well as just reliable CC, which has been a cornerstone to whenever Cloud9 has been successful. He's like a big tanky Morgana a little bit, with a single target ultimate. <laughs> a big tanky thing. Yep. A little bit of AoE, a little bit of bind, everything you want in a support player. So let's see what we have. Now, Sejuani's actually picked up here by Rush. Yeah. Goes for oh a little boy. bit of tank himself. Oh boy. So Sejuani's something that Rush hasn't really found success with on the yep. competitive landscape. But he has had a while since the North American playoffs to break this out again in mm -hmm. the North American LCS. Uh, it if they land the Sejuani plus Rumble combo, that's the devastating one. But it will be hard to kind of weave that Glacial Prison through the yeah. tank line of Cloud9, because you don't want that thing hitting the tanks. I was going to say, that almost looks like a Kog'Maw composition, if you want to protect one. But it's going to be an Azir and a Lucian coming in here for Cloud9. A lot of people that can be locked up, but harder for a Sejal to hit those two guys in the back line through these beefs. So. Yeah. Talking with some of the Cloud9 team members about Incarnation, mm -hmm. uh, they say he's put a lot of time into the meta champions, which will pay off for them in the long run. So it's no longer this Cloud9 
revolving around Zed and whatever High has been able to pick up. They're mm -hmm. playing whatever is meta, and Incarnation is doing his best to do that thing. It's not going to happen, guys. I'm sorry. Bard is uh, support, and so is Janna. Yeah. So, sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to be the bearer of bad news. LeBlanc for Shawe Shaw, definitely something he could carry the game on if he needs to. All that right. Up decently against his ear. So we are going to have the teams locked in on both sides. Like you said, Cloud9 kind of focusing towards meta picks. It's almost something they did when they started as Cloud9, when they were able to open up that Pandora's yeah. box. We go for the strong picks. We just keep playing it and get better at those picks. Yeah, and if we think back then, it was Cloud9 who was setting the meta picks. Right. Instead of reacting to them. The Nautilus is something they started themselves. The rest of them, though, yeah. uh, are fairly well set in now, so they don't necessarily have that champ select advantage they used to get on other mm -hmm. teams, and now they have to outplay them uh, within the game. This mid lane matchup is very volatile. The Azir Absolutely. versus LeBlanc. We actually got to see it yesterday in the TSM game where Bjergsen against Xiaowei Xiao, they played the inverse of this matchup. So right. now Xiaowei Xiao gets a LeBlanc. Uh, We'll see how that ends up working out for him because a lot of it depends on early gank pressure, but it is very snowball if one gets ahead. Very well trained from both sides in respect to this matchup, so it's going to be a good one. Definitely some jungler intervention going to be needed here to throw these guys off our uh, kilter. That's the hope. Get them Ragus off balance. versus Sejuani. Medios would have the early pressure advantage from a champion perspective, but if we think of the way the players play, it's kind of inverse. So I'm really excited to see who ends up getting the early aggression going. All right, well, it's time to hit Twitter and let us know who you guys are giving this game to. Tweet hashtag C9Win or hashtag TIPWin to at LOL Esports. We'll tally those up as always throughout the game. We are getting into Cloud9 versus Team Impulse, both one and two already as we Finish off this second week here of the spring split. They're looking to stop their slide in the standings. We're about to be on the rift, and both teams are about to leave it all. This would be very nice to get this win here, be able to reflect on the mistakes of the week, and come out with a W. Yeah. Both teams definitely want to be able to repair the start of their split. And honestly, the Shawi Showers incarnation matchup, <laughs> as they both really just wanted the plays of Ward. Uh, no real kill threat they could provide each other when they're running in there, so. Just trying to get control of that middle area. We'll talk about the lane matchup in a bit because there are some definite level one shenanigans going on here. I don't necessarily like what Cloud9 is doing here because they're, they're five man invading and they haven't warded the back entrance to their own jungle, so they are getting deep wards into Impulse's red side buff, but they have no control over Impulse doing the same to them. It's, them, it's just they don't know if that's actually happened or not. Uh, whereas Impulse will know where Cloud9 has been. Quite a few of those. Oh, unless this well. ward sees them. I was going to say they placed down that base gate ward if they try to dive through that as well. A few more expended here. It's a lot of pings going yeah. down. Everyone's just Pink trying show. to ping out exactly when the wards went down and how they can plan their movements. So this is really cute. Apollo and Adrian have snuck all the way in, mm -hmm. and they pinged where the ward they think it is, so they waited until it died to make their rotation through. Uh, Apollo and Adrian really manipulating the fog of war here, so they try not to get spotted on their way up. So this is crazy, because normally go. if you get those deep wards right there, there's no way for the duo lane to make it into the lane unless they actually make it through the mid lane after the wards have timed out and run up there. Right. So when Cloud9 sees Apollo up there, they're going to be very surprised. Just like Balls is very surprised yep. to see a Janna right now. Really clever ward manipulation there and knowledge of the early game ward placements. You see the ping going down right now on the side of Impulse at their blue buff. I was just about to say, Jack, this is usually what we see Lemonation doing as he starts to now late walk up into the jungle to see if he can get any vision here or any knowledge of what's going on. Very nicely played here. We've seen a few yeah. things in the early game that teams are trying to switch up and Especially throw the other one Especially against Cloud9. Gravity had a tremendous mm -hmm. level one against them as well. Right move. I want to see how Cloud9 responds to this because it looks like they're kind of out of options. Lemonation thought about walking up into the jungle to harass, but he was too late for that because he wasn't he wasn't expecting that formation just based on the spot of the AD carry. So take a very small advantage for Team Impulse uh, from the start when they got to see where Cloud9 invaded, and then they just use that information to then mind game Cloud9, and it, it will give them a, a nice start in this lane swap. 
Wow. Incarnation putting the hurting on Xiao Wei Xiao in the mid lane. This is going to give the rest of Cloud9 a little bit of safety, especially Meteos to do what he needs in the jungle if Rush is actually going to have to be taking care of Xiao Wei Xiao here. He'll heal up for now, but good pressure. And Cloud9 actually starts to go for this dragon. Yeah. Elimination going to be here. They should be able to get it. Yep. Just fine. Uh, very, very interesting choice here uh, by Cloud9 to take the dragon. Because basically, if we compare this to what happened yesterday against Gravity, uh, when there was no freeze yeah. in the duo lane for the opponent. Nice dragon. Yeah, great dragon. When there was no freeze for the opponent, Cloud9 tried to beat them to the rotation. But they were so far behind at this time, and the fact that the map was swapped around, mm -hmm. that instead of trying to get the experience in this lane that Apollo and Adrian are farming, they just go straight for the dragon. What that basically means is Cloud9 will be further behind in experience as well as gold because of that dragon, but that will even out throughout the rest of the game as we get 15, 20 minutes in because of the additive stat bonuses of the 6% attack damage and ability power. So therefore, Impulse does still have maybe an even bigger edge because Cloud9 took that dragon right now, but right. that will start equalizing in the mid game. Well, calling from behind is what Meteos has kind of had to do, so he's only going to get better at it. He said it was a bit troublesome, but with High being the shot caller previously, when things did go wrong, it would fall back onto Medio. So yeah. he's ready for the task. He's going to try to provide for the team here. Could be tough. See how Tip starts to pressure what they've had here in the early game. We're only five minutes in, and not too much has affected the lanes out of this jungle pressure just yet. Ball's back to the bottom. There's the swap coming in from Apollo and Adrian. They're going to head back down towards the bottom lane. Adrian doing a little roaming before this so he can get some safety and wards on the map. Yeah, we could really end up seeing some accelerated turret kills, depending on where the supports roam next, mm -hmm. whether the supports decide to stay in the dual lanes and try and shove down uh, the level 3 top laners, or if they start roaming mid to try and tilt yep. that matchup. As far as the effect of roam, uh, Lemon Nation is much more threatening than Adrian right now. John is more about disengage and protection, whereas Nautilus can go and mess somebody up. Maybe we'll see a very late dive here. Big wave stacking and yeah. Rush nowhere to be found. Oh, he did just. When they see that ward, Rush has to basically sh sh just rush up there <laughs> and try and stop this from happening. Arctic assaulted right back in the other direction. Goes to on the red buff side as well, so he doesn't get hit by the tri brush. Teleport coming in from Balls here. On to impact. He goes down four in the top lane for Cloud9. First blood to Meteos. Yep. Nice reaction there by Cloud9, sending people up there. Rush was late to that spot. So was Adrian. So Cloud9 completely beats them that rotation. Impact can't get out in time. Now with that call, are you trying to just buy time and hope your team gets there? Or should he have just left? Yeah, basically, Impulse didn't have the wards there to know that it was happening Overall. until it was too late. Yeah. Because by the time he spotted the people diving him, he wouldn't have had time to teleport away. And the wave was so huge that he's actually okay dying and teleporting back right away, because that's the best impact could hope from a 1v4 dive. Just a few steps ahead for Cloud9. Turn into a first blood six and a half minutes in, so... The Dragon as well going to be on top of that. They took out bottom turret, and the top may be theirs before. Tip can grab their next one. We do see Apollo is still beaten down on the bottom lane. He is just getting a lot of free farm to himself, but still even with Sneaky right now. Incarnation is putting damage on to Xiao Wei Xiao still. Pink Ward seen by Lemon Nation as he gets that roam on, trying to get some of that dredge line placed onto the LeBlanc. Going to be a tough gank for them, but they still want to at least blow his flash and rinse and repeat. Cloud9, 65 to 35% there. The fans definitely still back in the new squad with Incarnation. Yeah, now that level 6 has hit, Shaoi Shao can definitely get off a little bit more poke uh, by alting his W. Mm -hmm. You can see Meteos hovering mid, low mana for Incarnation here. <laughs> Elimination it's a really is there tough spot well. to be in, to be that low on mana and yeah. still try and stick in lane. Uh, you're putting your, your team at actually somewhat of a disadvantage if you can't trade back. That's why he's really conserving his mana right here. He actually has a potion. Maybe he's trying to bait in and engage with the guys being around him in that, in, in that instance. Nothing coming of it just yet. No skirmishes to be had here early in the game. A top lane gank onto impact is all they've had. He now gets the support of Adrian. 
And a little bit of damage trade here going in the favor of Cloud9 as they keep the pressure on this top turret, making it hard for Impact to get farmed. 25 to 25 for each of those top lanes. They're trying to use their level advantage right here mm -hmm. to take down this turret. I mean, because they out-rotated for this dive, uh, Cloud9 really having the opportunity to pull off some early game moves since Rush and Adrian haven't been able to do much yet with any of their roam. I mean, the early game jungle pressure, Meteos being able to pick up first blood, but it's more about just the rotation and the positioning on the map that's got him this edge. Again, Rush spends some time looking mid lane, but doesn't even go for it. Xiaowe Xiao back in after trying to get an ulti on the early game. Not working out with the lane swap for Impulse as much as they would have liked. 400 gold down now. They did get the first turret, but Cloud9 was able to grab turret Dragon. The first blood as they rotated back to the top lane, as we were just saying. Everything's kind of slowed down, gated by 30 seconds on this next Dragon. But they may just hit top lane once again. If they can get Impact down, he'll never even have anything to get to these Dragon fights and helping the objectives with Rumble Ulti. It's going to be a tough game. Yeah. We were talking about top and... The mid lane really being what needs to get going for impact, Impulse. Not happening in this game so far. And what Cloud9 is getting most of their advantages off of is just this top lane strength, and that's transitioning into ward control and buff control. Basically, right there, there was no vision for Team Impulse, and to prevent a second dive onto Impact, Rush just basically had to run up there and play defense. But yeah. when doing that, he exposed his own red buff, which was very quickly taken by Meteos. So you can just see by the ward spread on the map right now uh, how advantageous this position is for Cloud9. Playing it very safe as well, not over diving in their attempts with all this knowledge that they have. And once again, rinse and repeat towards the top lane. A good hook onto Adrian. No six there, so no Janna disengage. And just a six oh. for impact. He may use that ultimate that's actually already gone down right behind Cloud9. They're going to nicely take down Impact. No! That stun up beautifully by Rush. A double kill, however, coming in for Sneaky. They do finish it off as he dives through and goes deep, but Rush doing everything he can this game. Always pulled to the top side. Yeah, and he's always just a little bit late. Right. Medios and the rest of Cloud9 are far ahead of Impulse in their communication right here, and that dive was just not even the super clean by Cloud9, but by the time, it was actually really unfortunate for Rush when he threw out a Sejuani ultimate mm -hmm. because no one currently had the turret aggro to get trapped by the Glacial Prison, which then made the rest of the dive uh, pretty easy. So now a turret advantage as well as a nice kill advantage, all thanks to just beating Impulse to the spot. You were saying a bit earlier, Jat, they were using that level advantage to just consistently push down the turret, and they had a level advantage as soon as they did that engage as well. A monsoon probably would have stopped that entire engage, but Adrian's still level 5. Yeah. 3-0 now, coming up on 11 minutes into the game, and now a 2k gold lead here for Cloud9. If Meteos did say he kind of had some trouble calling from behind, these guys now have the advantage of calling from the lead. Incarnation back to mid now with the blue. Looks like he could put some pressure onto Xiao Wei Xiao, who has not grabbed his yet. Yeah, Incarnation was able to complete Morellonomicon, whereas Xiao Wei Xiao is still sitting on the components. Neither of these guys are actually going for the Magic Resist build. Uh, Incarnation himself is sitting with some Magic Resist in his blue runes, as well as Xiao Wei Xiao, so not mm -hmm. what happened yesterday, where Xiao Wei Xiao was just staring Magic Resist in the face and saying no and then getting one shot again and again. <laughs> he has Magic Resist this time, but it, it creates a slightly more defensive early game. But then they just go ahead and build the offensive item with Morellon Omicron instead of the Athenes. Well, this Dragon's been up for a while, but with Rush in the top lane, as well as Meteos, we haven't seen too much play around it. Looks like Tip wants to start that vision control once again. And we do see Impact in the mid lane here, so I expect this is going to come to be quite quick. But this has kind of been the story for Team Impulse in the games they've lost. The up. crazy aggression and the playmaking that Rush was able to display last split. And we thought he'd be able to display this split thanks to him getting rank one on the Korean solo queue ladder right. in the small offseason. But aside from that one game on Evelyn, he's just not been able to make plays. He's tried. He's played Evelyn, Lee Sin, and now Sejuani. Mm -hmm. uh, just a little bit slow to these things. And now they're just straight up starting the Dragon. Cloud9 
does not have Azir, so they are not contesting. Siveral coming out, they're trying to force. They should get Lemonation on this one. The rest of the team kind of in a think I can help him, but they should not have thought that. Meteos could also go down. The teleport from Balls a little far away, and they are just walking on the red carpet. Equalizer coming in from Impact. On to Impact now. A great hit into the fight. That's going to be Sneaky coming up with a few kills for himself. Balls as well onto Apollo. It only took a few seconds for them to get resituated for that one, but Cloud9 is able to turn it around after Impulse looks for too much. Yeah, there was a big turning point in that fight when Equalizer hit at the same point as Monsoon. So Adrian and Impact not necessarily in sync. It right. neutralized their own Equalizer. And then the late arrival to the fight in Incarnation really turned the tide right there. Even though that fight was beneficial for Cloud9 in the long run, I think it kind of spoke to both teams not quite being up to how strong they should be. You know, first off, Cloud9 not having Incarnation there in the first place to mount this, the assault. And secondly, Impulse uh, messing up their Monsoon and Equalizer timing, which then allowed Incarnation to turn the fight around at the end. But when all is said and done, it means more kills for Cloud9. See it happen one more time here. Yeah, it's a great job by Team Impulse to say, let's fight right now, when they see the choke point. Uh, but there's there's really no reason to Jana Alfie right now. Um, What's he actually knocking back? Meteos wasn't even in the middle of a spell. All he did is make Sneaky, Sneaky not have yeah. to dash out of the Equalizer. Then when Incarnation dives in, that would be a great time to have Equalizer because you want to be able to heal your team as they're knocked back and prevent the re-engage from Cloud9. But of course, he just burned the cooldown and it spells disaster for Impulse. It's that chaos once again they thrive on that also beats them up most of the time. A few ultimates that just do not sync up and Impulse come off of a dragon with a few members down. Cloud9 can go ahead, set up wards, and clear. Not this one, though. Good pressure by Impulse as it's 5-1 to one now, 15 minutes in. That gold lead was actually still stretched by Cloud9 within that fight, even though Tip got dragon. But they do prevent number two, help in the long run. If this game gets to that point, this turret should be going down. Looks like they're just going to brute force it here. Not much Cloud9 can do. Everybody's alts are still kind of coming back up. I do have to point back to the, the very start of this game, though. Um, just off the first yep. dragon that Cloud9 was able to get. Because to start the North American LCS split, Cloud9 gave up the first 12 dragons to their opponents before they were able to get one. So it definitely feels like there was a definite point of focus for Cloud9 to get dragon control this game. Because they were presented with a set of choices early on in the game, whether they try and match the minions in the lane swap or take the dragon. Right. And they very clearly and without hesitation took the dragon. So I actually do like that adaptation from Cloud9 to get it early. Uh -oh. oh! An explosion onto Sneaky. Can they even rebuttal this? I don't think so. He goes down. They're going to have to wait for him to come back up. Can Impulse get anything out of this, though? It's going to be Impact in the top lane. Maybe some forward wards to be placed. So far, I guess that's just a mark on the board for them. Getting a little bit back. That was a slight lapse of awareness by Sneaky because they had no vision control in mm -hmm. the side lane brush. But I also understand why he was able to get caught out right there because basically Xiaoi Xiao and Rush had both jumped over the wall to get into that brush. Cloud9 did think they had the entrances warded. Uh, I think that's how they got in there. I'll, I'll go back and double check, but now they're going to clear out that pink ward because having that side brush control against the Blanc is incredibly pivotal. It paid for itself. Return on investment for that pink ward for sure. Cloud9 grouping a little bit in the mid lane here. Xiao Wei Xiao looking to see if he can get a pick, but he's about to get pinched himself. Should have an easy escape with the distortion as he sees. Oh no, he finds Sneaky on the back line. He had his eyes on the target the entire time. Not really scared about where Balls was going on that one. Xiao Wei Xiao looking to bring out a little bit of that spark play and create some highlights. Just short of the kill onto Sneaky. Yeah, that could have been a huge kill if they shut him down again. Actually, yeah, he just got back. I went back and checked the sneaky kill again. Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't that clever by Team <laughs> Impulse. Sounded so good. Rush had walked through a ward before dashing into that brush, and Xiao Xiao walked into the mid lane, so he was covered in fog. But Sneaky knew there should have known, yeah, because it was shown on the mini map that Sejuani was there, and he still walked through the danger spot. So, uh, the uncharacteristic free kill there uh, onto Sneaky by walking where he shouldn't have. Cloud9 still though with a 2,000 gold edge. Almost getting his second death there as well as they knew his flash was down. 
Good focus by Xiaowei Xiao. Missing a little bit of a window, so we'll have to wait again. See if Cloud9, that came off of Cloud9's kind of positional mistake. I don't think they're gonna be doing that too much more here, so it's gonna be harder for Impulse. Still pushing mid for these guys. It's gonna be Balls taking care of that top lane. He just got his teleport back, so he can come back with the team. Why he's off in the distance. And looks like they wanna get more dragon control. Number three coming up in the game, one for each team so far. And there's, there's a huge level discrepancy between Rumble and Maokai right now. Uh, wow. It's level 8 to level 11. And you can see it in the CS as well. Which is it's pretty crazy when you consider that Cloud9 also prioritized early Dragon. So they've been playing this lane swap incredibly well in the favor of their own top laner. This Dragon will be very critical to how how well Cloud9 plays. We need to watch to see if Incarnation is synced up with the rest of the team. Azir has tremendous zone control over the Dragon Pit, yeah. but so does Rumble and Sejuani. The fact that the Rumble is underleveled is a bit of a disadvantage. This is also the period of the game where Cloud9 with high would usually excel. Uh, last year, Cloud9 played very normal speed early games and they right. excelled in the mid game. Let's see if they can catch Shaoi Shao here. This is the start of a fight. Locked down. The engage is already there. The damage from Impulse actually gets out. Xiaowei Xiao is alive. The blue buff is on him, so they can still throw out some chains and poke it. But I'm sure they just want to turn tide on this one and get out. Dragon is going to be Cloud9's pretty much uncontested on this one. But definitely a miss or an error there for Impulse. Yeah, Xiaowei Xiao pushing the split push a little bit too far. And the team pays the price by giving up this Dragon. He was somehow able to escape mainly because LeBlanc gets to dash across the map. Uh, but he lost most of his life, his ultimate, and his flash, as well as his silver ultimate. They go out the dragon, and maybe more because they had to back afterwards. Those soldiers, so much damage to the turret, being cast directly on it. They're able, easily able to take that down. And it looks like it's going to be a back and a breather here for Cloud9 as they get some more items in the inventory. Being set back, impact 40 CS behind, rush that Leandris and actually just got his boots finished. So he, those fights at the Dragon could still be pretty big, like you were saying, with a good yeah. Sejuani ultimate. Scary stuff that Cloud9 has to deal with and dance around. Let's see if they can actually get some hit on the balls here. Impact is floating his way down, but I think it's gonna be just a few seconds too late. Impact just needs a way to get experience. He's three levels back. I yeah. I don't agree with the way Impulse is sharing creeps right there, so... Impact should have got that giant bottom wave. Even if he's sharing it with Shao Shao. Mm -hmm. When you share experience in League of Legends, you get a bonus multiplier. One person taking experience, if you think of that like 100% experience yeah. across people. If two people are there for the minion wave, it's around 130% experience. So sharing experience, by its nature, creates more experience for your team. So you should actually almost never solo take a wave. You should almost always duo take a wave yep. to level up faster, especially when you have someone so far behind the curve like Impact, who missed out on that huge wave entirely. Mm -hmm. Xiaowei Xiao mopped it all up. Now they have a level 13 in the block, but still not a rank two ultimate on Rumble. That would be nice right there. Impact throws it down. Rush is right in the front of this one. Can they even get anything on it? You saw Apollo use the Sivir ultimate to get everybody out. Sej still forced to flash over the wall. And I was going to say, they're doing all of this so Xiao Wei Xiao can allow them to create pressure. And they're still being pressured. But he does come up with a kill for himself here. He solo killed Maokai. I didn't think that was going to be able to happen, actually. Uh, I, I guess that's why you take a whole out. wave of minions for yourself. <laughs> uh, yeah. He just blew him up on the side of it. So that's actually... Not a disastrous change yeah. for Impulse, but that's only thanks to Xiaowei Xiao creating some split push pe pressure. Uh, Balls will, once he picks up magic resist, might be able to deal with that a little bit better. Be careful, low mana here. Cloud9 trying to get just a little bit more out of these instances. And they're gonna head back once again. Let's see this fight in the bot lane. Oh, so he was a little hurt, but he still yeah. even had the, oh. He was window shopping for the fight with that teleport on. Yeah. Unfortunate. He was definitely thinking about where he could TP into mm -hmm. because Cloud9 had such strong ward control in that red buff of Impulse, but no ward control where Xiaowei Xiao was roaming around. Good forward wards by Cloud9. They have all the vision they need on the top side of the map. 
But it looks like Impulse is going to start heading down towards the bottom side once again, hopefully trying to use the Shao Wei Shao split push. <laughs> Actually, Impact's able to get his own in the top lane now, so it's not going to be too bad. Looks like he's got a wave and a half that he'll get safely here. He's still not level 11. Which That's true, not even second level is ultimate. Is such a key breakpoint. Now he just hits it when he mm -hmm. finally gets that own bit of experience. Next fight may end up being different for Impulse uh, since Xiaoi Xiao was able to get that kill and they finally hit the Rumble breakpoint. Once again, these teams are both fairly well set up for dragon fights, except we haven't gotten to see a straight up dragon fight because no one's been cohesive in their rotation yeah. so far this game. A skirmish for one member, then a team has to back off. Yeah. Incarnation definitely having a much better mid lane game by himself here. Those games of Kog'Maw and Victor seemed like he was a bit too measured in his play, but with the soldiers being able to stay back, he's not afraid to kind of put himself a little bit closer here. We've already seen that in a few of the dragon engages that they've had. And now the team, once again, trying to pressure the mid lane. Xiao Wei Xiao back to the bottom. May have to call more pressure, but the team of Cloud9 may use this to fight. Yeah, they're, they're actually kind of trading sides of the map pressure-wise right now because Cloud9 has ward coverage in the red buff of Tip. And likewise, Tip has ward coverage in the red buff of Cloud9. And there's no one who can really deal with the LeBlanc 1v1. So therefore, Cloud9 actually has to make some pretty risky mm -hmm. decisions right now. They're the ones losing the split push battle, but winning the team fight battle. And we're seeing uh, those two forces fight against each other yep. in this game right now. Well, here comes the side swipe from Xiao Wei Xiao. They know he's coming, but they may actually just still try to take this fight off the chase. All it takes is Lemonation and get in range of his ultimate. That's what happened last time to crush Xiao Wei Xiao. So the pressure works to pull him off a of mid lane. It's just a game of tug of war now, really, between both teams. Who is going to get the better engage as they're pulling each other around in the rotations? Luden's Echoes have been finished for the AP carries. A little bit more burst for them to add into the fights. Infinity Edge is going to be for Apollo with the Phantom Dancer. Sneaky went for the static shiv this game, so a little bit of damage difference there. Yeah, a bit of a lapse in pressure here for Impulse, which is why Xiaowei Xiao has to back away. Mm -hmm. Mainly, Impact ran top lane, so he has teleport threat, but no immediate threat. And instead of pushing mid lane, Cloud9 decided to go chase after Xiao Wei Xiao, so... We're basically just seeing these teams neutralize e each other's strengths in preparation for this next dragon fight, which could result in pulling people together. Cloud9, though, does have what seems like the stronger team fight right yeah. now, especially if Incarnation can position properly on his ear. Here comes Tip, though. Big dragon fight. Xiao Wei Xiao in for a little bit of vision. Two-man ultimate. Sneaky's actually on the front there. Now he's forcing the Dragon Pit, and Dragon's attacking him. A good hit from Apollo takes him down. Now on to Incarnation. Apollo is just chucking the boomerangs. He gets a double kill on the priority targets of the fight. And now it's Xiao Wei Xiao who's still alive, and he's going to be hitting up more teammates. Nice, or rather, opponents, I should say. Taking down Meteos. And wow. All the members of Impulse come out alive on that. Yeah, Impulse just completely changed the game with that fight. Rush was able to walk into basically melee range of Lucian and land a Glacial Prison, which yeah. then was comboed with the Rumble. That's the combo they've been trying to pull off this entire time. Leandries, two ranks in Equalizer Rumble, with a giant Sejuani ultimate, starts that fight off in a big way, and there was no way Cloud9 was winning that fight afterwards. There was no zone set up by Incarnation Azir to stop Rush from walking right. in, which is why that fight was so one-sided in the side of Impulse. They just took complete control of this game with that. It's like the like, dash and from Xiao Wei Xiao confused them enough for Rush look at this. to waltz in. Incarnation has to control choke points on Azir. If anything, if Cloud9 is going, going to force this dragon as five people, Azir has to be in the back of the pit oh. so he can prevent the entrance. Impulse can run in for free. Incarnation isn't zoning anybody off with those spells. No. And Impulse just walks away with the complete crushing in a team fight because the front line wasn't being aligned. They were just being dudes spread across the map. Yeah. Uh, Allow Sneaky to die almost instantly. Xiao Xiao gets free reign over his targets. And yeah, they get the dragon after that as well. Baron, dragon, and a big team fight win. Uh, get a little credit to Adrian there. Nice monsoon during that shifting sands to keep our incarn incarnation completely on the outside. Great plays all around, and that's why the entirety of Impulse stayed alive that fight.
coming out strong. They are biding their time, getting pushed in by Cloud9, but they knew Shao Wei Shao had the upper hand, always split pushing, roaming back to peel the pressure, and now back to getting that split push on. We'll see if Impulse can now work off of this and start to get that mid lane pressure on. Yeah, and Shao Wei Shao's hit a huge item power spike here with his Void Staff as well. Yeah. He was already killing balls, so now the magic resist he puts in is being uh, shredded through by the Void Staff, meaning he can still crush him in that split push. There is still no, no one to deal with Shao Wei Shao, but now he has Baron empowered minions, and the team fight threat has hit its point for Impulse. Still no zones being set up by Incarnation's Azir. Uh, once again, something is just out of sync for Cloud9. The team cohesion has not built up yet. They had the early game shot calling this time, but instead, where Cloud9 thrived the most in the past, in the mid game with a lead, Cloud9 has lost that lead pretty substantially, ballooning to a 5,000 gold deficit now. Not Things not working in their favor. Usually, what we just saw is where they come back. Cloud9 excelled in team fights. Very calm yeah. communication. One ch going guy chatting after the other, not chaotic, and they come out on top. And it's where they... It's not only they'd come back in games, they'd crush people in games. Yeah. If we think back uh, to 2014, in the summer split there. I know it's kind of going a far ways back, but it's a very relevant stat. They were the best team in North America. If they had a, a, a gold lead going into 20 minutes, mm -hmm. they won something like 16 of 17 of their games. They almost never gave up those gold leads. This time they had a dragon advantage and a gold lead and a kill lead and a good tank line for some substantial damage dealers in the back. And they were spread out. They allowed Impulse to create chaos on them and now again, Cloud9 has to play heavily from the back foot. Heavily from the back foot. I was just looking at Adrian, who's going to keep them on the back foot now. Ardent Sensor, along with his Talisman of Ascension. Is that our first? In the LC? I don't even know. I think we've actually seen yeah. him. So Ar Ardent Sensor yeah. was changed recently. It now not only grants attack speed, but it grants magic damage on hit for six seconds. 30 magic damage on hit for six seconds. You normally don't see it because for a couple hundred more gold, you can buy a Mikhail. Right. Uh, which I guess they trust Apollo's ability to spell shield <laughs> at this point. I and believe. they just want him to rip people apart from the back line. Well, it only took him a few hits to take down Incarnation once he found him with those auto attacks. Didn't even have to really get a boomerang in. Pretty much a ricochet boomerang onto Sneaky is what took him out after the Sejal. So yeah. Apollo, He'll be hitting really hard. And he's, and he's got the, the Wrath Potion Woo. on top of that. Playing with fire. Yeah. Just a little bit. And the worst part is the rest of Impulse was there ready to defend him. So <laughs> as soon as Shao Wei Shao was back to base, Cloud9 could have Righteous Glory right in there for a team fight. They have two of them and probably just taken the fight. Yeah, double Righteous. But they didn't see him go back, so uh, they didn't know that. Did they see him go back? I'm not sure. Didn't look like it. Might have been just There's a ward map rush right now, place. but I feel like that ward is... Oh, you're right. It only looks like it has It's probably placed afterwards. It. it was yeah. after. Yeah. That's what happened. You are correct, sir. Impulse now back on cloud nine side of the map. It's, it was the other way around for the first 20 minutes of the game here. And like you said, Jack, quite interesting. Cloud nine fell behind with that early lead at 20 minutes, having more gold and still not being able to control the game. It's the opposite of what we'd expect from these teams. Yeah. Uh, pre 15 minutes, last split, cloud nine had the lowest kills and deaths of teams because they played very subdued, and then they had some of the greatest differentials in kills over deaths between 15 and 30 minutes. Impulse was the other way around, where they had incredibly bloody, good, higher kills than death, yeah. zero to 15 minutes, and then all chaos broke loose in the mid-game. Impulse, tons of kills, tons of deaths. Uh, this time, though, it's the controlled early game with Impulse coming ahead yeah. in the mid-game, just... We got new teams now, it seems. To add on to that, the past 30 minutes, Impulse, again, excels in kills. Well, I wouldn't say again, but they start to. They figure out the game, they get into their fight mode, which usually would be tough against Cloud9, the team that pretty much played together for over 100 games, came through, challenged together. That's a lot of synergy to lose, especially when yep. the voice is the one that stepped backwards. So Impulse's best chance now with that lead. Just to take down Cloud9 to stop their fall in the standings. Very close to getting impact there. Luden's Echo proc along with that soldier. But immediately, Xiaoi Xiao, Xiao all on his own in that bottom line. He makes Cloud9 come back right away. He might even get enough damage down to take this turret out. 
This is back to what we used to see from these guys. Whether he was on Cassidy, he does this on the Yasuo, now on the LeBlanc. He's feeling good. He's in his environment that he's used to being in here in the game. And I'm sure the team feels very, very safe along with this happening. Wards all over the map. Impulse actually has wards all up to the wall of C9's base right now. So it's going to be hard for them to come up with anything that Impulse doesn't know about. It's more and more looking like it's Impulse's game. Mm -hmm. They were looking out of sorts early, but they've definitely come together here. Uncontested number three with Baron in 20 seconds. Yeah, we're going to end up seeing maybe a bit of a trade here. Cloud9 trying to rush up the mid lane, but it's just too fast right now. Mm -hmm. the, the low cooldown on Talisman, <laughs> it's only a 40 second cooldown. Add in support masteries, it goes down to about 32 seconds. Adrian just popping that freely. It's, it's crushing the map rotations right now. The captain boots Janna with Talisman is making it so Cloud9 cannot out-rotate pretty much anywhere. Oh, Chow is, Chow is oh boy. still down there. Uh, this, this, is, uh, this is bad. This is desperation from Cloud9. <laughs> There's probably enough time for the LeBlanc to come up here as well. Basically, Cloud9 has to run immediately. This is going to be really tough. Rush still has that ultimate available. Doesn't want to throw right into someone's face. Could hit the full team here. A nice hit back by the Emperor's Divide. Impact and Rush in a bad spot here. Incarnation takes a few shots coming in from Apollo, and he goes down immediately as Cloud9 starts to get wiped out in this fight. Everything was focused on Rush, and he made that happen by putting himself in the front of the fight. A good hit by Xiao Wei Xiao for the triple kill. Apollo for one more, but it's going to be taken over by Adrian as they get the ace on Cloud9 at the Baron Pit. Yeah, there's already an exposed inhibitor in the bottom lane, but Impulse doesn't have time to go down there right now, so they'll take the Baron. That was a very disappointing end to a series of outplays by Team Impulse, where basically Cloud9 throws their hands up in the air, says, no way we can deal with the block. YOLO, Baron. But that doesn't work in the LCS. Impulse easily collapses down onto Cloud9, and they are crushing them now with their second Baron in the game. Great fight. Rush putting himself in an ideal position here as we see this again. Yeah, well, first off, the team that is down thousands and thousands of gold shouldn't be taking early Baron damage to then peel, especially against a disengaged Janna. So, Impulse doesn't even need to play their cards just right. Also, Incarnation shoots people into the fight instead of out of the fight. So, Cloud9 yeah. can't play the kite back game either, like a Gragas. Azir disengage. So many things are contradictory to a cohesive plan for Cloud9. Everyone seems to be doing their own thing. Uh, and Impulse is better at the game of people doing their own thing, making it look like Impulse is very well coordinated here. Ardent sensor Apollo in the back line with Sivir crushing people down. Uh, it definitely helped that fight. You see how much damage is hitting Incarnation when he just takes a few auto attacks. It completely changes where his positioning has to be in the fight. Usually he doesn't have enough time to do that. 12 to seven, Impulse definitely turning the game around after 30 minutes. The stats do not lie. They once again go high kills over low deaths in their fights. And once again, Cloud9 is gonna go for broke in front of the base. That's gonna be Impact going down. He got the equalizer out, but it's only in between the champions. Now, Sneaky, one last hit. The distortion back actually takes balls into a bad spot. And Xiao Wei Xiao brings him in for the next treat. They're gonna go on to the inhibitor. These plays are just not in favor of Cloud9 as much as they're trying. Yeah, it's gonna be game. It takes 36 minutes. Once Impulse got the lead, yeah. they hammered it home. Fifth much better performance from Shao. 66,000 to 53. A very good 805 LeBlanc, LeBlanc from Shao Shao as Team Impulse take down Cloud9. This moves Impulse to two and two, which at the start of the year isn't even that impressive. Yeah. The worst trend, though, is Cloud9, even after beating TSM with the first game of the split, now sits at one and three. So Impulse back on the road, it seems. Xiao Xiao got his assassin play, was able to farm and carry. Top yep. CS in the game, 380. Top kills in the game, eight, without a death. Pretty awesome game from him. He created the opportunity for Impulse when they were behind to split push. And that just started everything because that allowed them to outpace Cloud9, who couldn't keep up with a split force of shot calling. 
Impulse taking it in. The fans loving the victory here, and I'm sure they are going to be able to breathe a sigh of relief knowing that they're able to take down Cloud9 at this point. Another mark in the win column for them and for Cloud9. They have to think of, you know, what to do next. They're kind of always undermined it now towards the middle part yeah. of the game. We saw it as well before, or we said as well before, the TSM game was kind of a squeaker in that sense. They're always looking for teams' errors. There's a lot of yeah. growing to do for this new Cloud9 squad with Incarnation instead of High. And to speak from some personal experience as a shot caller, when I played League with Dignitas, I was a shot caller. When I played previous games in Guild Wars, it was an eight-man team, and we had a double shot calling system. Shot calling is this really a complex thing. It's not as simple as just having one person knowing where things could go and being able right. to tell everyone on the, on the map where to go. There's too many decisions in League of Legends for that to yep. happen. And it's, you, you need time to get everyone on the same page and know what the shot call yep. is going to be. And also, even if Medios was doing a lot of shot calling on the previous team, Transferring over to someone who is vocal to someone who is quiet creates a big gap in communication because a lot of times you can have a primary shot caller, which no. sometimes was designated as Medios, but to have another voice of authority like Hai, who in certain situations could overrule Medios or who could bounce ideas off right. about how to win the game, if you have someone else in there, and I'm not saying Incarnation can't do this, it's just it's, right. not, it's not displaying on the rip that, uh, that that's happening. Unless you have someone like that with a high level of trust, especially in split push situations where you need to have a lot of back and forth communication, uh, without having time for that to set in, yeah. or trust for that to set in, or people that are vocal enough for that to happen, uh, you're going to run into some big issues. And that's what's starting to look like is happening with Cloud9. Absolutely. From my personal experience in that sense, real quick, second yeah. guessing is the thing that tears that apart mm -hmm. as well. And that's one that stems right from that second-guessing your calls. To see what the pros have to say on that match, let's send it down to Kobe, who's with Team Impulse.